morning. All right, everyone, good morning. It's Anna Gibbs with another uh, session of Monday Morning Mojo Live. I'm so excited you could join me here this morning. I know you've had a great weekend and you're ready for a really powerful week. Uh, so it's always my intention to share some thoughts with you every Monday morning that can prepare you to have a really great week. So grab your coffee, grab a pen, maybe you want to take some notes and uh, let's jump in. I want to talk to you today about being present, the power of being present and what that really can do for your life. And I know that we've heard this before. Right, we've probably uh, heard this many times. We've heard it, we've read it, we've talked about it. And what does it really mean to be present in the moment? Well, I think first and foremost, it means that you're giving yourself the opportunity to focus and you're giving yourself an opportunity um, to really be less distracted, right? And so we know that we've heard this advice many times in many ways. And, and the reason for that is because it really does open up so much possibility for you. And, you know, you've heard people say, don't dwell in the past. Don't get too caught up in what's going to happen in the future. Uh, be present in your own life, right? And, and, and all you have is right now. Um, and, and I want to unpack that for you this morning and really share with you why that is such sage advice. Um, and it just might take a little time for you to build some new habits around it and you can start today. It actually can become very simple uh, for you to be able to stay more in the present. So I think that when you're fully in the present moment, uh, you will feel a little more alive and you're going to feel a little more alive because you're less stressed. You're going to feel like you have the ability to be clear and calm. And, and that in itself can be a great opportunity, right? Just write those two words, clear and calm and, um, and not distracted, of course, as I said. And, and I think that when we can stay present in the moment, we get to really experience everything that's happening around us. And that means that we get to pay more attention to the people that are in our space, which can certainly make them feel more important and help us to connect with them on a deeper level. And when we do that, we can really hear them. And I think that that creates a, a powerful experience for everyone involved, but it does reveal things to us that I think we can use. I mean, if you were to really think about how often all of us can, can be a little distracted throughout the day, what are we missing in the process of being distracted, right? There are cues and clues and nuances in our communication with each other. And if we're not fully present, what are we missing? So, so that in itself can be really a game changer, right? And so when you get the, when you give yourself the opportunity to tune into what's right in front of you, I think that um, it can dial down some of the stress and anxiety and make life feel a little less complicated. And so in our current world, right, we, we know we live in a complicated world. We live in a place that there's a lot of stuff happening around us. Most of us have very demanding careers. Uh, and so if we had the opportunity to really stay present, we are giving ourselves, um, I think, the best tools to be able to get through the day at a higher level and really give ourselves the, the opportunity to dial back on some of the stress and anxiety. And, and I'm gonna tell you, even those of you who like me would like to say that they're always focused on the possibilities and they're focused on um, more um, opportunity and gratitude, we still feel stress and we still feel anxiety, right? We can't, we can't tell ourselves that that's not true. So if you could dial that down, what effect would that have on you, your health, and even the relationships around you? How would that impact your time when you get home at, at the end of the day? So I, I just feel like this is such a powerful conversation, right? How to stay present. So grab a pen and, and some paper because I'm going to give you some tools on that. Um, because again, given this hectic pace that we tend to find ourselves in, would, would having some strategy help you, right? Because sitting here, it's great to say, yes, this makes sense. I want to stay focused in the present. Yet, how many of you find your mind wanders a little bit too much in the past? And, and what happens when we find ourselves, you know, spending a lot of time thinking about what's happened before? Well, one of two things, if not both, tend to happen. We, our brains have selective memory, right? We've talked about this here in Mojo before. We have all these filters 
And so depending on how you're feeling, you might focus on only the negative things that happened. Or when you're thinking back and reflecting on a situation, your mind's going to go to the mistakes or the mishaps or what have you. So that's going to skew what you could learn from the experience. And that negativity is going to carry through into how you're feeling today. The other thing that could happen based on your filter is that you might just focus on the half truths of what went on and only see the good or, or decide to create a different lesson from what happened in the past. And so that's not going to help you either. Um, and for some of us, when we spend a lot of time focusing too much into the future and we start thinking about what's to come, uh, that can make us feel anxious, right? Because we don't know, we can't predict what is gonna come in the future. And so if you spend too much time there, that's gonna raise your level of anxiety and, and you're gonna feel uneasy. So the value in keeping your, yourself focused on the present moment is that this is all you have at this moment, right? So if you can get through the next five minutes, next hour today, and, and look at how to make your decisions today and stay focused on, your top 20%, you know, stay focused on, you know, whatever the goal is for the day, create an intention every morning around that, then, then that's what you have to work with, right? Because that's all that's in your control is the present day. So let me give you a couple things to, to help you with this um, and, you know, give you some, some simple tools to help you stay focused in the present uh, moment. And again, the reason for this, the reason why it's so important is because it really is, I think, the single most, um, what, how do I want, the, the most impactful thing that you could do for your own mental health, right? For your own mental wellness is to stay focused in the present. So I think it's the key to being healthier. I think it's the key to being happier. And uh, we know from, from what we've had, you know, in terms of conversations here in the past, Positive psychology tells us that the happier we are, the more successful we will be, the more creative we can be, the more fulfilled we are. And we, again, as I said a minute ago, can fight that anxiety and worry and dial that down. So, um, so what's a, a way for us to do that? Well, the first step, as, as you've probably heard me say here many times, is make a, a commitment to this mindset, to this philosophy, right? So it comes back to awareness. It's being aware that our mind can sometimes take us too far into the future, too far into, into the past. And then that brings up a lot of feelings and those feelings create these thoughts and our thoughts shape our actions, right? So you know how that works. So the first step is to make a commitment that this is gonna work for you. Make a commitment somehow to stay focused in the present moment. And so that's the first step is just a decision as it is with most goals. It's just to make a decision. The second uh, thing I would, I would uh, suggest is to create just a simple system around it. So what do I mean by a simple system? It, it could be um, notes in front of you wherever you spend the most time working throughout the day. It could be a reminder on your phone. Uh, it could be your habits around time blocking, right? So something that we talk a lot about in our world at Keller Williams uh, is to get focused each week on your big rocks, right? And we use a simple tool. It's an outline called a 411. I've shared it here in different uh, sessions over the last couple of years on Mojo. And I might even have a copy of it in the files. But if you'd like a copy, just reach out to me. So it's just an outline to help you get really clear about what are the big goals you have for the year, what are the, what are the goals then that you want to focus on this month, and then each week you're going to list just the big rocks, those top 20% items, right, that you're going to focus on and execute on this week. And by doing that each week, you're going to get to your monthly goal, which helps you chip away at your yearly goal. So things like that, productivity tools, the way that you organize your calendar, those are simple systems that will help you stay focused in the present moment. Okay. Um, and so that's number two. Number three. This is a, again around awareness, but I want to bring the awareness into your physical body. Your body and your mind are constantly communicating. So be aware of what's happening in your body. Do you feel a little tightness in your neck? Do you have some kind of like butterfly sensation in your stomach or some kind of stomach ache? 
Are you feeling like you're distracted? Do you have a headache? Are your eyes twitching or burning, right? All these things might reveal something about how you're feeling and that could reveal, right, that you're not staying focused in the present moment. So pay attention to what's going on in your body. Your body is always giving you information. <clears throat> and so when you can be more in tune with your present moment, your body can connect with that as well energetically. And you may find that you're a little bit more relaxed. You may find that, <clears throat> excuse me, you can sit up straight. You may find uh, that there are there's less tension in your body. So pay attention to what your body is actually telling you. Okay, so as you start to connect and pay attention to what your body's telling you, now I want to encourage you to get really connected to your thoughts. And I know it sounds simple. All these, all of this is simple, my friends. <laughs> all of it's simple. It's just whether or not it's easy, right? So if we could remain more conscious of our thoughts, we would be able to redirect. And I think that for a lot of us, practice this today. If you do one thing, practice this today. Really make a commitment to yourself and just talk to your subconscious mind right now and say, I want to be more connected to my thoughts today, okay? And that just saying that will, will send a message. And so if you could keep your thoughts much more present and yes, more, more positive. And, and what do I mean by positive? It's not good versus bad. What I mean by positive is that you're focused on possibility. Write that word down. Change the word positive to possibility. Because I know sometimes some of us hear po positive and we're like, yeah, I know what I'm just going to sit here and tell myself everything's great. You know, I I'm going to sit and just be like, oh, bring it in, you know, namaste. No, I mean that when I say positive. It's that you're looking for possibility. You're looking for opportunity. You're looking for the potential rather than the problem. Are you with me, my loves? That's what I mean. So if you find your mind drifting too much into the future, and, and the future could mean tomorrow. <laughs> The future does not mean 10 years from now. If you find yourself worrying a little too much about where you're going rather than what you're doing at this moment, that's a, that's a sign that you've got to dial it back and come into the present, right? And when, when you realize that, you can do a couple of things. Get up from your chair, walk around the office for a minute or two. Step outside if you can. Get a breath of fresh air. Just change that state and you'll find that that's going to help you connect back into the present moment. And, and so when you bring your mind back to the present situation, now you're going to be able to think more creatively, more strategically. So if you find that you're thinking too much, you know, about what's been going on or what's been uh, not working, right, you're too much in the past, you're going to feel anxious, right? And then that's going to shut you down. You're going to possibly get into a conversation with yourself that could even be a little self-loathing, critical, um, or again, feeling like sad even or not motivated and you have to ask yourself how is this serving me right there's value in reflection don't get me wrong because I, I mean I, i've said this to you before there's value in reflection we're talking about how your thoughts are going to move you throughout the day and and take you off task what we need to do is train ourselves to think about what is the opportunity around me today i'll give you an example and I know so many of you can relate to this. Um, so let's just talk about getting healthy or losing weight. What's been working for me, true transparency lately, and I've been on this quest my entire life. Um, what's been working more for me lately is I only worry about today. This is for me. I'm just going to share. I've stopped the meal planning. I've stopped thinking about where I, what I want to weigh in six months or how many times I'm going to go to the gym. Um, I focus on today. What, what choices can I make around my activity today, my movement, the food intake, whether or not I'm going to have a glass of wine today, right? Those are the choices I need to make today. How many steps I'm getting then I let tomorrow take care of itself. And you know, you've heard this advice before, right? But I, I'm just going to put it into context of one example that I think a lot of us could relate to. So if we did that and we worried about today every day, then we have the opportunity to do so tomorrow. Now, I'm going to throw something else that I know one of you is thinking out there. 
Okay, Anna, you talked to us about goal setting and creating a plan for the future. Yes. When you make the decision that it's time to set goals and, and strategy and vision planning, then you're having that conversation, right, with yourself and you're preparing your mind to go into the future to create a plan. And then you're going to strategically work backwards from that plan. That's fine. What I'm talking about is how we spend our day every day, right? Because think about that, the power of the goal that you just created. If you're not taking now that goal and bring it, breaking it down into a strategy, like I just um, described in the 411, and you're not putting your energy in what activities you can do today to move that needle, that's, that's not being in the present. So this is how these things all work together. So I just wanted to put that out there. I felt like someone was thinking that. And so I'm not trying to contradict myself. It's about knowing that once you've created those plans, now we got to focus on the activities we do today. Because the activities you do today will have a compound effect on the results that you're looking for that will get you closer to the goal. And so that is why staying present is so important because you may not have time to be distracted, right? We all have things that we want to accomplish. We made a decision that 2022 is going to be our best year ever. So we don't have time to be distracted and we have to give ourselves the opportunity to be 100% in. You know, and I know that sometimes this can get a little challenging with the way our lives um look today, right? You know, we have great tools with technology. Um, many of us learned how to work from home and use technology like Zoom, like what we're doing right now. And that can be challenging because, you know, we could might, we could think we can multitask and not be 100% into a conversation. And again, what are we missing in that conversation when we do that? And, and every time you try to multitask, um, you are creating a diminishing effect on the results that you can bring to the table. Because multitasking is a myth. We can't really handle doing more than one thing at a time, not with efficiency. So that's another, I would say, important value of being 100% present, right? So just to give you a couple more tools or tips to start thinking about even today, uh, another thing that I would share with you that would help you stay more, more in the present moment is to be aware of your surroundings. Again, simple. When you come into a room, scan the room. Just connect with your surroundings. Be uh, able to feel like you're grounded in the chair that you're sitting in, right? Because when you are and you know you've all been there, when we're going through the day and our mind is taking us and we're racing and we're thinking about a lot of things as we're walking to another meeting, sometimes we don't even know how we got to the chair, right? Or you've had that feeling when driving and you're like, your mind is just, and then all of a sudden you pull up and you're like, okay, I don't know how I got here. <laughs> I don't really remember driving here, but I'm glad I got here, okay. So, you know, that's, that's the thing, right? So if you're aware of your surroundings, that helps you to feel more centered. Feel the chair underneath you, supporting you and holding you in place. Know that you, you can feel like the, the table or the desk in front of you. That helps you to stay connected. And if you can be connected in your physical space, that's how you start that connection that will allow you to be really focused in the present thoughts, right? So I know we live in a crazy, interesting world. Um, if you're one of those people who can suffer from, you know, uh, adult ADD, uh, and I say that with a hug, uh, don't sit by the windows, right? Where you have to know something about yourself because if you're gonna sit by the window and get distracted by the squirrel running around, then you're not gonna be present and you're gonna miss what's happening in that meeting or that conversation. And that, if, if you take anything away from this conversation this morning, the, the, the reason why we wanna be more present is to start to mitigate what we're missing out on. We're missing out on so much information. Remember, I've shared this with you in the past. Your mind has that filter, the RAS. It can, it, it's processing all the time, right? And it's processing and collecting data for you based on the filters it's created from your own habits, your own thoughts, right? And so this is where you have an opportunity to bring things more in alignment because you're missing so much information that you could be using to make strategic decisions or to connect with people on a deeper level 
to, uh, to offer more help or assistance or come from contribution. So that's why this is all so important because at the end of the day, I think being more present means you give yourself the ability to enjoy more of life. If you're constantly, if your mind's always racing to some other place, you're not even enjoying where you are at that moment. And so that's an opportunity for you to bring more joy, bring more gratitude, more fulfillment, for you to be able to experience whatever's happening at that moment, right? And, and again, you know, I know it can be a challenge because we're living in a very, um, frenetic world at times, right? We have a lot of information coming at us. We have a lot of resources to connect in a lot of ways. Um, and so, you know, this is about how to train your mind, right? How to train your mind so that you can live in the present moment, worry less, uh, have the opportunity to step away from the past because there's nothing we can do about that right? All we have is the opportunity to create what we want today. And so I think that, you know, savoring um, is, a, so savoring in itself is an important term that we use a lot in positive psychology, right? So write that word down, savor. So if I was to ask you the difference between um, enjoying your dinner or liking your dinner um, and savoring your dinner, what comes to mind? right? So savoring is where you really create this, this experience um, through uh, ex the experience itself that, that brings you a deep level of joy, fulfillment, happiness, pleasure, right? So if you could savor the moment more, how would that start to create a ripple effect in your world? Would you not become the person more people want to be around? So that's another dimension of this conversation is, do you want to be the person that people see a lot of crazy energy? Remember, remember back in the day, now I'm going to show you my age, with the Peanuts cartoon, right? When little Linus, God bless his little soul, would come in. What did you know about Linus without anyone saying a word, right? He had that aura around him. Okay. So what is your aura when you walk into a conversation? virtually or in, in, in physical state, um, or when you walk into a room, do people see cool, calm, present-minded thinker, or do they see, because ah, you're constantly thinking about a million things and your energy is so frenetic and you're thinking about the future, or do they see someone who's like a little pensive and, and not sure how to read your face because maybe you worry too much about what happened five minutes ago or yesterday or last year or whatever, right? So, so how does that create or not create opportunity for you? How does that put resistance up between you and the thing that you want to be able to connect with? Or, or like I said, you know, for someone to look at you and say, I want you on my team, or I want to collaborate with you, or I want to ask you a question, right? So if you're not approachable, because your energy, you know, remember your mind and your body are connected. So don't think for a minute that your body is not showing the world what you're, what's going on up here, right? If what's going on up here is a little bit of a firestorm, they're going to see it in your body. If what's going on up here is really dialed down or, or possibly, you know, thinking negatively or saddened, it's going to show up in your body. Right. So I think that's an important concept, too, is, you know, if you want to be that person who can uh, attract opportunity, whether it be with new business opportunity within your career for growth and movement, if it's, you know, attracting money to you. Right. Money is currency. It's energy. You've got to think about the vibe you're putting off into the world. Right. If you're looking for your 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 uh, true love, you got to think about the vibe you're putting out into the world. So that may be something you take away today. So I've thrown a lot of stuff at you and I trust you've taken some good notes, um, you know, and there's a, a, probably a dozen more things I could share with you about how to get into the present could be, again, exercise like yoga and walking, um, especially if you can incorporate 
like a gratitude exercise in either of those uh, two things that that really will help you feel more grounded. Uh, journaling, of course, could be another way to do that. Your morning routine is another way to how how you set the day. Um, yet I know our time is starting to um, the hourglass uh, is is going down and it's almost eight eight o'clock. So I I trust I've given you enough to get started. So as always, I'd love to hear. I know I have a couple of people here with me on Zoom. If there's any feedback or questions, good morning, Jill. I see you're off mute. How are yes, you? Yes, th thank you very much. It was wonderful. Um, I've concluded, and I think I've said this many times, that life is a performing art. So when you look at the face, it tells it all. <laughs> it does tell it yeah, all. And, yeah. and, you know, I think for us to have that responsibility to be aware of that, more so for what it means for us, right? It's, it's, not, it's not about making it a more pleasant experience for the other person, although that is, is a great benefit. It's really about what you get from that. So thanks for sharing that. And remember, this is not a dress rehearsal, my loves. This is this is the real thing. So the sooner we can get a handle on some of this stuff, the quicker we can start to level up for other things, right? Because if we if we allow a lot of this to keep us down, we can't move to the next level in our own growth or in our own mindset. So, um, you know, I, I just feel like this is such an important topic. We'll talk more about this during the week too on Mojo, I'm gonna share some of the resources with you on the power of being present, which is also referred to as mindfulness, right? And so that's a new way for us to look at this is how do we you know, connect with our present moment and become more mindful? Um, meditation could be another way to do that as well. Any other final thoughts from anyone before we sign off and say goodbye and have a powerful week? Okay, so here's the challenge. Think about some of the things that I shared with you this morning and just start with one this morning. One thing that you're gonna do so that you can become more present and be able to see the results of that because of your awareness. Your awareness is gonna be heightened. So what is the one thing? Circle it, put a star next to it. Feel free to share that on our Facebook page. I'd love to see your progress and hear your feedback. Like I said, I'm gonna share some other information around this topic throughout the week. Um, and if you find this to be valuable, please share this with others and um, let's continue to grow the Facebook page. And I love that so many of you watch live through the Facebook page. I see the numbers and it's astounding. I see um, the replays on YouTube. So I know you're catching this at different times, which is fine. Um, but join us, try, you know, challenge yourself to join us live at 730. You might find that that's a great way to start your day in a more mindful way as well. And um, I also, I'm excited to share with you, I think we have members now in seven countries, including Africa. I've gotten a couple of private messages from two people who are in Africa. And I just find that to be, it, it just is so exciting. So I love that. I love that uh, this is a great place for all of us to stay connected to things that will transform us and will help us to live bigger, better lives. So have a wonderful day. I will see you soon. Next Monday, I will not be here live. I'm traveling of a business trip. I'll put a reminder on our Facebook page, but you know, there's always gonna be good content that I share there. So thanks again for being here. Have a wonderful week. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys.